Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. From the ground, it may be difficult to tell what type of plane is flying in the air. But up close, the characteristics are far more apparent. The B-52 Stratofortress is a long-range, heavy bomber aircraft designed to perform versatile missions. It was created to carry large quantities of weapons and is now considered to be an important part of the United States Strategic Bomber Force. This aircraft has such a big mission. Uh, you know, we deploy to the desert, we deploy to Guam. Uh, we're we're um, the main contingency, you know, to, to keep Russia at bay. Recently, officials proposed equipping the aircraft with a Common Strategic Rotary Launcher, or CSRL. These launchers are multi-purpose and modified to carry a wide variety of weapons. Located inside what is referred to as the bomb bay, rotaries are designed to rotate the weapons mounted in the bomb bay. Recent changes to the B-52's rotary launcher design continue to make the aircraft more flexible and lethal in combat environments, as the launcher can now hold even more munitions than before. Although, upgrading the aircraft was not without effort. To transport a rotary launcher, Teams must get the heavy launcher on a trailer before a vehicle moves it to the intended plane. Once ready to load, weapons are loaded onto the rotary. This can take up to 11 hours to do. Finally, once the bombs are loaded, the team uses the trailer to hoist the common strategic rotary launcher into the bomb bay. However, like any technological hardware, the rotary must also be inspected and engineers must sometimes perform maintenance. Once the B-52 is officially ready for launch, the team may decide to launch the aircraft in a manner known as a cart start. This launching method occurs when a small, controlled explosive cartridge is inserted into two of the B-52's engines as a type of jump start for the generator. This allows the crew to become airborne in much less time than during a typical B-52 launch. Though these launches are routine operations, they are used sparingly. The B-52s, however, are not. The Stratofortress aircraft was initially created in the 50s and have now been around for more than 65 years. Over the years, technology on planes has been upgraded, but the main components of the original B-52 still fly. Before recent upgrades, the aircraft was what many referred to as a mismatch of digital and analog systems. Thank you. 
The B-52 had originally contained analog interphone panels that crews used to talk to one another. And crews originally had to carry thumb drives of important information, such as maps, on and off the plane. Now, crew members can receive digital transmissions in the air. But before crews can head into the air, they still must be trained. This is done by the 93rd Bomb Squadron, the only B-52 formal training unit in the Air Force. The team is responsible for training the B-52 pilots and other operators for duty, including electronic warfare officers and weapon system officers. Even after students have graduated, they are expected to perform frequent training operations to ensure safety. These not only help engineers determine what pieces of equipment need maintenance, but it also aids in making the actual operations faster. When aircraft need to be ready to go at a moment's notice, crews must always be prepared to spring into action. While the B-52 is an integral part of the Air Force's strategic bomber force, the B-1B Lancer is considered just as important of a role in the long-range bomber force. It can hold about 120,000 pounds, including internal and external payload. However, a large team is needed to put together the bombs before they are loaded on the plane. The men and women of the 34th Bomb Squadron and the 34th Aircraft Maintenance Unit and the six B-1s we have deployed here I think are a very obvious visual assurance to our allies and partners and a deterrence to potential adversaries in the region. Once officially built, the bombs are loaded by the 28th Bomb Wing, who are trained for loading and unloading munitions. The airmen use a variety of equipment to haul the heavy bombs and safely place them on the aircraft. Once ready to take off, crews may decide to use an afterburner. An extension of the rear engine, the afterburner gives aircraft like the B-1B additional thrust for taking off and during the cruise. This thrust is developed by combining jet fuel with oxygen in the afterburner. The combination is sent into the exhaust stream from the engine turbine and is then ignited. Once the Air Force has fully used aircraft for its entire lifespan, the B-1B Lancer is decommissioned. In many instances, the planes are then moved into a museum, where it is safely stored and available for the public to visit. Getting the aircraft to the museum requires a team of trained professionals to work on and transport the B-1B to its final destination. Many different units and squadrons are in cooperation to make the trip to the museum successful. All parties work together to make the transfer. Similar procedures were in place for the B-17 Memphis Bell when it was moved to the World War II gallery at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in 2018. There's a 
a tapestry of history that is, is no place else in the world. The mission that we have here is, is a sacred mission, truly. If it's not preserved, it'll just disappear along with some of the stories that are attached to those objects. According to the Air Force, the aircraft was the first heavy bomber to return to the U.S. after flying 25 missions in Europe. It was also one of the first bombers to be moved into a museum after being moved in 2005. Located in Riverside, Ohio, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force now houses more than 360 aerospace vehicles and missiles. Displayed for people of all ages to visit and look through, the museum has everything from aircraft to equipment and weapons. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.